because what we're going to see now is how to take a net from within your design and show it and see it in one of the output pins so you can actually probe it. Now, there were times when things were simple and uh, every engineer could simply take an oscilloscope and probe wherever he wanted. Now, these times are over, you say. There's an FPGA, everything is embedded, everything is in the silicon, you can't reach anything. Well, really not true. The fact is that you can take any line, any net from within your FPGA design and simply draw it out to one of your output lines, one of the pins, a physical pin, and then apply an oscilloscope, a probe to it. Which is what we'll do now. Just to remind you, I'm switching the edit mode to read-write, so we can make changes. We shall now go through the procedure for drawing a net to the outside world. We begin with getting another list box. We are going to use this one for finding the net we want to see, so I choose to watch all nets. Next I want to find a certain net, so I type a pattern which is typical to the net I'm looking for. Here it is. OK, done here. This was just a preparation. Now let's find the output pin we're going to sacrifice. Note that I find it under all components by typing a pattern which matches an output port. We've got six lines matching the pattern because this is a vector signal. Let's pick one of them and find it in the fabric. One click on the array itself to select it, and now clicking the red magnifying glass to get the right to the IOB component. And some extra zoom. I click to select the triangle, which is the port. Not the component and not the net, only the triangle. We can see the net in green going to the component. It's very important to select only the red triangle and not the whole net. In other words, as you can see on the screen, we have the line still green and only the triangle in red, which means that we have selected only the port and not the complete net. Now this is important because what we want to do next is to press delete in order to disconnect the net from the port. Another thing I'd like to draw your attention to is that some information about the net and the port appeared at the bottom window when I clicked the port. I always check this line just to be sure I'm not chopping the wrong pin. So where were we? We've selected the port. We are sure that it wasn't the net that we selected, so we won't delete the net. It's finally time to disconnect the net from the port. Just press the delete button. Next up is to connect our net to this port. So, we select it again, checking in the bottom window that we indeed clicked the same port. Now, we reopen the list of nets from before and select the relevant net while having the control button pressed. So now, we have both the net and the port selected. We tell FPGA Editor to connect these two by clicking Route. In the bottom window, we get an error message saying there is nothing found to route. Ironically, this message tells us that everything is OK. At this point, the net is connected to the port, but not yet routed. Keep in mind that they are both still selected, so we complete with clicking Auto Route. Just to be sure, let's click the port again and check the bottom window. We can see that the net is properly connected to the port and that the propagation delay is given. If you're using only an oscilloscope on a single line to check uh, some signal, it's fine. You don't care about a few nanoseconds here and there, they won't make any difference. But if you're checking sync between lines, and in particular, if you're using a logic analyzer, then a difference in propagation delays, a skew, may cause a few problems if one of the signals is a clock and another is something else, is some signal you want to check. 
If you don't believe it until you see it, simply double-click the IOB component. We make this writable merely to get a black background, and then zoom in a bit. Here we have the entrance point, and it's indeed the net we wanted. And now simply follow it all the way to the physical pad. I would like to point out, by the way, that there is a possibility to use a function called probe. I'm not showing it because I'm not using it. And the reason I'm not using it is that the probe's utility uses vacant pins, those pins which are not assigned as IOs. Now, here's the catch. If the pin is connected to something on our board, chances are that we also used it somehow in the FPGA design. In other words, we'll need to disconnect the pin from whatever it's used for, and only then can we use it as a peek hole into what's going on inside the FPGA. Probes is supposed to be automatic, but only if the pin is unassigned. I still owe you a small one about the Vertex 4 and its routing problems. Now, the thing is that the IOB became so complicated that they split it into a simple pad device with all the voltages and things like that and iLogic and OLogic. Now look what happens when we want to use a pin for which the OLogic is activated. Usually it will be just a flip-flop there. Following the procedure just shown we disconnect the pad from its net. I'll quickly select a net to route and click route again. So far so good. But now I go for the auto route, and I get this. Well, I get nothing for a while, but then the message saying auto route failed appears. I'll select the net to show you what an unrouted net looks like. So why did this happen? Well, the only way to get to the pad is through the O logic element, which is currently occupied with something else. So all we have to do now is to select the O logic component press delete and the OLogic is gone. Now we select the net again, click auto route and there we are. Clearly the route goes through the OLogic which was in the way before. And this concludes this little tutorial about the FPGA editor. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope for you that you're going to start using it because if you do it will save you a lot of time. Good luck and thank you.